we're going to show you a couple of things. First of all, we're going to show you how photo authentication works, the way the Veripik system does it. And then we're going to show you how easy it is to actually edit a digital picture to make a convincing fake. First of all, let's start with some pictures. I'm going to go ahead and show you a couple of pictures of cars. So as you see, this looks like a perfectly normal picture of a car. And if you look very carefully at the license plate, I'm going to go ahead and advance to the next picture. This looks like the exact same picture, except that, as you know, the license plate is completely different. So both of these cannot be real pictures. One of them is a fake, and one of them isn't. So let me go ahead and show you how we could do that by um, using the Veripig Digital Evidence Manager. I'm going to double click on the icon. I'm going to log in. Now what the Veripig system does is it actually is a digital evidence management system. So the digital evidence manager can handle all kinds of digital evidence, including photos, videos from both regular video cameras, interview room systems, or body-worn cameras. It can handle scanned documents. It can handle all sorts of data types, such as Word documents, Excel uh, spreadsheets. It can handle flatbed scanner documents, even x-rays from medical devices and so forth, uh, and, and cell phone um, memory dumps and, and so forth. But what, the, what we're going to talk about today is how it handles photo authentication. Photo authentication, as the Veripik system does it, is a process of analyzing the digital picture as it comes into the system and just before we store it into our database. And we analyze the picture itself to determine whether or not the photo information matches that of a known camera. Now, how can we possibly do that? Well, Veripik has been in business since 1998. And in that period of time, for almost all production cameras, we stored digital, we stored digital picture data from all these production cameras. And we basically have one of the world's largest databases of photo data from production cameras. And we analyze the real pictures and then compare them to the pictures that are being imported to determine if a photo editor has actually touched this picture and, and made some modifications in the past or not. So you could think of it very um, much uh, the way a an antivirus program works. And it analyzes, you know, antivirus would analyze a, a file coming in and determine whether or not there's a information in the file that matches a known uh, virus. So what Digital Evidence Manager, or DEM, does is does the same thing except for photos. We analyze the photos and see if it matches um, the, uh, the camera's original data or whether it, it doesn't. And based on that, it, it makes an evaluation if whether or not it probably had been edited. So let me go ahead and hit import. And it's going to go and pull up the pictures of all those cars in that folder I just showed you a little bit earlier. I am most interested in these two white car pictures. I'll go ahead and hit apply. And it's at, asking me to add to a case. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a case number. Or I could add to an existing case, but I'll create a brand new case number here. Most police departments will start with a case number that goes, let's say, the year, either it's two-digit or four-digit year, and then the month and the day, and a, a four-digit number after that, typically. So I'll go ahead and add a new case. And it says title and notes. This is how I could document the information in the pictures. I'm just going to go ahead and say test for authentication. Now, you could type in anything you want in these two fields, and they're completely searchable in our database because our database understands plain English. I'll go ahead and hit Finish. And now, looking at the pictures and comparing against a database of, um, of cameras. And it says that the second picture, the 0521 picture, doesn't match any supported camera. Should we process this as a secure-only image? I'm just going to go ahead and say yes. 
And now I have these two pictures um, in our system. So let me go ahead and say thumbnails. So let me select the first one. And I'm going to ask the system, is this authentic? I'll hit the authentication button. And it says, yes, it passes authentic. But not only that, it can actually figure out what device produced this picture. This was a Canon EOS 10D. I'll go ahead and close out of that. And I'll go and select the other picture. This is the one with the um, other license plate. Go ahead and authenticate. And it says failed. The photo is not authentic. The secure only non verific devices. So let me go ahead and, and uh, do a select all. And let's do it again. Authenticate the one that starts with six. It's authentic. And go ahead and go to the other picture, the one that starts with one. Authenticate, did not authenticate. Now, um, I've actually spoken at a lot of uh, evidence conferences, and people have asked me all sorts of questions. And one of the questions they always ask me is, you know, how do you know all this? Well, um, I, I am the CEO here at Verapic, and I used to work at Adobe. So I, um, I know a thing or two about how pictures are constructed. Now the, uh, the second thing is, they said, well, you know, we have a standard operating procedure. We use some other system. We don't use Verapic. And uh, our other system doesn't seem to have this capability, but we don't, um, we don't really need it because it takes a really long time to edit a digital picture. Okay, so let me go ahead and just open a simple program. Um, and this, this doesn't have to, I, I happen to be using Photo Impact right now, but I could be using Adobe Photoshop or any other program. And um, let me go ahead and, and, and um, show you how this is done. So uh, first of all, I'm going to magnify so the license plate, just so I could um, get a little bit better quality of uh, edit. And now uh, I've been told, you know, some pl police departments might have an SOP that they, they have about 30 minutes or less to get the, uh, the pictures from the crime scene or from the accident scene back into their digital evidence management system. And uh, 30 minutes to an hour is considered too little time to do an edit that's convincing. So I'm going to go ahead and show you how fast it is to do uh, an edit that's very convincing. So I'm going to go and select this thing called the clone toothbrush, I'm, uh, sorry, clone paintbrush. And I'm going to go and select a brush size of 10 pixels. Hold the shift key and select my initialization point and let me go ahead and start painting. And what a clone paintbrush does is it actually takes the pixels from the, the region where I target it and copies it to the region I'm trying to paint. There you go. Um, I don't know if any of you were timing me, but I think I took about 15 seconds to do a convincing fake. There's a lot of other capabilities in the system. For example, calibration, where if there's an object of known size, we can print a life-size uh, um, version of the picture onto paper. So you could use that for things such as uh, measuring things within a, um, within a picture or matching uh, tooth uh, marks and, and uh, tire treads and so forth. Uh, we have other modules like such as background removal so you can actually remove the background and leave uh, a latent print, uh, make it more visible and easy to analyze. There's all sorts of other things and there are other videos on our YouTube channel that demonstrate how these things work. Uh, but I, today the scope of this particular demo is just to show you how authentication works. If you need to talk to somebody live, feel free to give us a call at 888-VERIPIC, that's 888-837. 4742 and ask for the training department. If you wish to learn more about our products, you can come to our website. That's www.veripic.com. That's www.victorecoromeoindiapapaindiacharlie.com. And if you uh, wish to actually buy Veripic's products, you can contact 
our uh, reseller network and have a reseller local to you so you can get the best personalized service you would like. And if, uh, if you would like to contact the factory directly, we can help you as well. Um, you can contact us or you can get our products on uh, the internet on Amazon.com. Thank you so much.